Hey all you paper playing peoples, welcome or welcome back to Inky Finger Society. My name is Arwen. I'd like to give a big shout out to all our new subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. That's very nice of you. Um, today I have something a little bit different. Uh, I have some new items that I put in the shop. Um, want to get some feedback for those. So if you guys could leave some comments about them in the comment section, that would be great. Um, I also have a little bit of inspiration, a little bit of work on our accordion journal, and let's get started. Um, first thing I have to show you is something that I decided to call, actually uh, a client of mine helped me <laughs> pick out the name. I call them Golden Shadow Papers, and these are them, and um, there's five sheets on our Etsy listing. And what it is, is uh, I wanted to create a paper that had a little bit of depth, dimension, something like something was coming out, something was being revealed from it. And I also wanted to use my uh, gold leaf because I use my gold leaf a lot in the journals I make, but none of the things in my shop reflected that. And um, I came up with this. So, as I said, it comes in five sheets. Two are in the style of lace. I think you can see the gold on there. Okay, and then I have two in small script. One is in letter style. Like that. And one is horizontal for a signature or whatever you would like to use it for. And the last one is a large script one. Now, these are the standard order, but you can customize your order. If you make the purchase, you put a note to buyer and say you want all lace or all script or however you want to mix it up. It's up to you. Also, you're plenty welcome to ask me if I have any other different style stencils that you might be interested. Uh, bearing one thing in mind that if they have large openings, the stencils, uh, doesn't look good. It's better with small little openings creating a pattern like that. Okay, so that's one. And the the client i'm talking about who helped me decide on the name um she's a very special lady she actually lives quite close and um her name is deborah and she goes by grunge queen on etsy and i'm going to leave a link to her shop she makes the most stunning journals that i have ever seen they're absolutely beautiful so if you want, go ahead and check her out. I'll leave the link, like I said, down below. And I sent her these when I was uh, doing the prototypes. I sent her a couple of them. I said, what do you think about these? And I said, what should I call them? Shadow papers, golden shadow papers? And then she received them and she wrote back, yes, golden shadow papers. So big shout out to Deborah. Um, the next thing that I have is Piano rolls, yes. Very excited about these. These are just a couple of samples of the styles that I have. I have these simple ones. They are so fragile. I love that print. Look at that. And I also have more fancy styles. Like this. I have these really fancy. I forget what. You, so these are antique vintage piano rolls. And I sell them in three ways. You can either purchase it as it is in the box. Oh, so cool. I love them. Um, or you can choose to purchase it um, cut into. 12 inch sections all cut one whole roll you get the whole roll but I cut it for you because it's a, it's a little bit difficult to handle if you're not used to it and it's very fragile um, so that makes it easier for you 
or you can ask to have it cut up any way you want. If you want, don't want it in 12 inch and you want it in 40 inch strips, that's fine. Or you can order it out of box, off the roll, uh, folded. It'll be folded at 12 inch lengths so you can better manage it. Um, so yeah, those are those three ways you can get it. Um, Oh, it's so gorgeous. Look at that. I don't know if I'm, look, I'm taking it out of the light. It's just, it's so nice. It's like, um, I don't know. It has a glassine feel to it. It's not glassine. I looked it up. It is a different paper in terms of what was produced at the time. And it was produced specifically for uh, piano rolls. Yeah, it's very beautiful. And the boxes are in various uh, states of disrepair, so just be aware of that. These are not perfectly intact boxes. As you can see, this one is broken. Sometimes they're completely intact, but they're still very fragile. Um, yeah, so that's one of my new obsessions. And now another new obsession of mine is time cards. Yeah, I like these a lot. So these are manila card time cards that I have coffee dyed. These are trifold time cards like this, like this. They're great for taking ink, for stamping. Um, these are the regular ones. This is the back side. Okay. And these I'll be putting in uh, by the end of this week. Um, and I think they're really great for making cards. This make a really small notebook with some pockets in there and decorate them up. I think those are wonderful. So you get three of the large ones. I don't fold them because some people want, may want to fold them differently um, to use for folios, something like that. And you get six of the large ones. Okay, so I'll put a link to that also. And then another new thing, if anybody's, uh, anybody who's familiar with my shop knows about the botanical slides that I do. Well, I decided to do evil eye slides and they come in a set of three, one turquoise, one dark blue and one white and each comes with a little charm. You can see that. The dragonfly. Let me turn the light this way maybe a little bit. Yeah. And that one's a key. And a honeybee. Okay. And I decided to do these because I love evil eyes after living in Greece for so many years. Um, it's something you see all the time and people wear them for protection. Anyways, I thought they'd be really cool for junk journals. Yeah. So they're a little bit different than our botanical slides, which I'll link down in the description also. They uh, have a smaller window um, and they have four eyelets instead of one and they also have this instead of the the ball chain okay mm, i like those okay next if you're familiar with our shop then you're probably familiar with our vintage tapes which come in five sizes come one eighth one quarter three-eighths, one-half, and five-eighths. 
uh, or you can get the whole set. You can get an individual one or you can get the whole set. Well, I decided to step it up a notch and now I do the vintage tape in a two inch size. That's on a separate listing. It's not on the listing for the five tapes here. Okay, so I'll put a link for that also. Um, let me see if I can show you an example of using that, how it looks. I think I have something in here. Pretty sure. Ah, I've used some there. I folded it over. And there. Yep. Yeah, I knew I used it in here. I use it anywhere else? Ah, there's a piano paper. Mm. Ah, a little bit here, underneath this pocket. Right. Yeah. So, that's the two inch tape. And now, maybe I should leave this out because I'm gonna use a piece of this now. Now, this is a new tape that I am trying to decide whether or not I should put in the shop. Let me show you what it is. Uh, maybe I should use this. Yeah, I'll do the... Anybody who's been following along knows this is the accordion journal that we're working on. Yeah, I'll put some here. So, this is smaller than the other tapes. It's a lot less tape. These are all 30, uh, 33 uh, feet. So that's what, what is that? 16 yards? Yeah, 16 yards. This only comes in five yards. It's a bit pricier to do for the shop. Um, yeah, let me show you what it is. This is Scarlet. red cellophane tape. Transparent. It's very dark, but it's transparent. Get my scissors. Okay. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see in this light it's transparent but it's very dark red cellophane and I love it so I'm thinking about putting that in the shot um, it'll be in the range of the other ones it's just less tape there's less tape on this like I said it's five yards compared to 16 yards on the other ones so we'll see we'll see I think I'll put a few in Oh, and it's got, uh, the, the tack on this is a bit stronger than the other one. So, put that there. Now, the next thing I have to show you is quite large. Let me clear out some of this stuff. Give me one moment, please. Okay. This is our new Essential Beginners Junk Journal Kit. And I'm very excited about this. I've wanted to do it for a long time. I actually started working on the product Ooh. last fall. Yeah, I think that's when I started and I finally completed it. It's up in our Etsy shop and the whole thing is designed for someone who wants to start junk journaling, but doesn't know where to start and somebody who looks for things that they want to put in their junk journal that they see on videos like this or somebody else's videos, goes over to Amazon and sees that they have to buy a hundred of these tags or a hundred of this or a hundred of that or 500 of that. This has a little bit of absolutely anything you would possibly want to try out in a junk journal, including a journal. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to show you 
is the bag with embellishments, hardware, and tapes. Okay. I'm going to put the exact amount of everything on the video, so don't worry. So you have your brads. You have mini bulldog clips. You have a variety of gourd pins and safety pins. You have buttons, all kinds of buttons. Some wooden cutouts. Some jump rings, because you will need jump rings, believe me. Some book corners. A large variety of paper clips and wooden clips. Some book plates, two simple and one very fancy. Some ball chain, I think there's three pieces in there. Some paper metal tag. Um, some of our vintage tape, a quarter inch, and two pieces, uh, two rolls of small washi. Bag of all kinds of beads, seed beads, um, check crystal. Um, there's actually some Zvodovsky pearls in there. Um, and some other different, yeah, oh yeah, I got some blue cobalt lentils in there. Some nice stuff. These are scratch stickers, which are really cool. Um, they're very easy to use. You write something or stamp something, whatever you want. You put one of these on top of it, and whoever gets your journal or tag or card or whatever you're doing um, can scratch it and find out the secret message. You have some hole reinforcers, some photo corners, and some craft labels and tags. Okay, next up we have the blank journal. Now I know a lot of people when they're just starting out they have a fear of sewing a signature and sometimes it holds them back from trying things out. So I put a blank journal in this, I believe it's 140 pages, a very, very nice vanilla colored thick paper. Okay, it's just the perfect size. And the way we, you would use this, if you wanted to start out by pasting things in, or gluing things in, sorry, sticking things in, you could do that. If you wanted to start making pockets and stuff, you could remove a page, or every other, uh, every third page, as it starts bulking up, and just re reuse that paper. Uh, it's very nice. It can be covered. You can add the book corners that I showed you in there on it. You can do a lot of things with that. Here are two spray bottles. Uh, I've written coffee and tea, but you could use them for anything. Um, you could make your own ink using the insides of a dried up marker and some alcohol. Um, you could do a lot of different things, anything you want. Here's our fabric, lace, and fibers bundle. Give you an idea what that is. So, get a pack of different laces. They're all about 12 inches long, approximately. Um, a lot of different little fibers and strings, ribbons, uh, all kinds of stuff. Rick rack. Okay. Get a crochet doily. And you get four pieces of fabric, which at least one piece of fabric is enough to cover the entire journal, if that's something you want to try. Okay, you get a piece of felt. Felt is great using in journals. It's very, very, very cool. I love it. Um, you get a, what's that called? Embroidery floss, sorry. And two tassels. Okay, so that's your fabric and fibers. Okay. This is tags, cards, and ephemera. Okay. 
you get three coin flips, which you can make botanical slides from. You can do a lot of things with these. I love them. Okay, you get three playing cards. Three of these tags. Three dividers. Three guest checks. I love these. Three mini tags. Three repair tags. Three vintage style postcards. Three manila dividers. These are actually really, really thick. You can do a lot of things with Get three regular index cards and three graph index cards. Three recipe cards. Three library pockets, and these are self-adhesive. You just peel the backs and stick them right on. Three bingo cards. Three Rolodex cards. Three large index cards. Three large tags that you can make journaling cards from. Three layaway tags. Ten admit one tickets. Get five dried flowers, which are great to be used with these. Okay, and then you get kind of a sample version of our essential book page uh, bundle. You get twenty English pages, two music page, two antique Greek pages, those are from 1934, one Edith Holden, One Sears and Roebuck. One wallpaper. And one braille. Okay. And the reason why I put this in is because if you're gonna, you know, get a copy of Edith Holden just to try something out or get a copy of the Sears and Roebuck catalog just to try something out or even a, a braille book. It can add up quite quickly. Just those three things and the music page. If you're going on eBay to get these things, you'll be spending, ooh, Close to seventy dollars, especially for Braille this this size. Yeah, and if you would get to get the Sears and Roebuck, or ah, and if you would get a wallpaper, we're getting a wallpaper book. Oh, forget it. You're over a hundred by that time. <laughs> Believe me. Believe me. I know. <laughs> I think everybody's caught on to us. The things that we like and the things that we're we're going for absolutely nothing. A couple of years ago, and now being like, uh, you just jack the prices up on everything. Which, I mean, okay. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> demand, supply and demand. Okay. Envelopes. One of my favorite things. Okay. 
So, we've got three seed envelopes and a craft coin envelope. These are lots of fun. Three CD envelopes. Kind of a, a vintage style brown envelope. And this is a handmade envelope from handmade paper. Another craft envelope with closure. Cashier's report. Anybody who's shopped with us has seen these before. This is a photo envelope, white photo envelope. An airmail envelope. Simple red envelope. Small craft. Large craft. You get three window envelopes. This one I like. This is an ivory, very large envelope, which is really cool because you can do things like put it in the middle of a signature, open here and open here, glue these up, and you have pocket, pocket, pocket on the side, and pocket on the side. An interdepartmental envelope. Letter size manila. And an oversized manila envelope. And you're saying, what do I use those for? Well, once you get a handle on what you're doing and practice different things you want to do in the blank journal, you can make journals from these very easily, or folios. Hopefully I'll be able to do some videos to guide you on that, but there's plenty of great videos already out there. The great crafters. Okay, now we have glassine. Okay. So, this is a large sheet of glassine that you can coffee dye, tea dye, do whatever you want with. Okay, you can cut it up, fold it up, whatever you want. This is one of my favorites. This is a glassine, very large glassine envelope. And if those of you who have got our coffee dyed glassine envelopes, this is the big one in that. And you can do same thing I said about the ivory uh, envelope. Okay, you can fold it over, glue the sides. You can open the tops or the sides if you want. Make a nice little center for your signature. And you also get three different size glassine envelopes and three different size glassine bags, which you can also coffee dye or stamp, whatever you like, to try things out, to try everything. Okay, those aside, and this one is everybody's favorite. From everybody who's bought the journal kit from us already, this is, they say this is their favorite, so. This is a sampling of, not all, but most of the doilies that we carry. We carry, uh, I do them coffee dyed. Don't sell them like this, except in this kit. So this is our glassine doily border. Okay, and I can't remember, how many feet is it? I think it's three feet, or no, it's four feet. Is it four feet? Let me measure it here. Yeah, four feet. Nope. Nope. Wrong. Three feet. Okay. And then we have a sampling of our oval doilies. This is an embossed doily. I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to. I really like this. This really makes me 
think of something old, something Victorian, something, I don't know, something vintage, yeah. There's another one, and a bigger one. Okay, and then these are our round doilies, or some of them, a few of them. This one. Gold foily, uh, foil, gold foily, doily, foily, doily. Okay, really like those. And this one is a beautiful, very intricate design and embossing. It's very tactile. And we have two of our small square doilies. Eight inch, really. This is a German uh, vintage design. These aren't. This isn't a vintage doily. It's a vintage design of a German doily. And this one. This one I like a lot. Very beautiful. I love these corners. These are very nice for making envelopes. Very nice. Then we have our sample of our rectangle doilies. And this is the small one. I don't know if they're all fitting in screen. And these are embossed rectangle doilies. I'm trying to put the whole thing in because it's quite large. It's 14 by 10, I think. Yeah. Look at that embossing. Really nice. When you coffee uh, coffee dye them. It really looks nice because coffee kind of spreads out around the edges. There's another one. That's got beautiful embossing also. And then we have 10 mini doilies. They're cute. Very cute. And then we have, I believe, five, yeah, five pieces of embossed. It's like a glassine and it's embossed all around. Let me try to put that in the center. There we go. Okay. These are papers. Let me get some of these ones out of here. And folders. There's folders in here too. Okay, so here's there's quite a lot. Um, so we have some small legal, three sheets each, some small blank tablet, white tablet paper. And we have three large legal sheets. We have five loose leaf papers. We have three pieces of very high quality vellum that I like a lot. We have five coffee dyed papers. And this isn't a uh, coffee quality paper. It's a bit thicker. It's something kind of between copy paper and lightweight cardstock, it's a bit on the thick side. Then we have five sheets of neutral colored cardstock in your basic colors. We have five sheets of tea dyed paper. Then we have 20 sheets of that paper that I showed you before that was coffee dyed. That's between copy paper and lightweight cardstock. It's quite thick. You can do a lot with that. And then we have 20 sheets of school ruled lined newsprint, which is very nice. 
And then we have three manila envelopes. And two pieces of textured cardstock that is 12 by 12. I don't know if you can see the texture in there. Okay, and that's our paper. These are our bags. Okay, we have a lot of different bags and different sizes. First we have two of these printed bags. They're two different styles. Okay, we have this bag, craft bag, and another small craft bag, medium-sized craft bag, and a large craft bag. This is my favorite. This is the scraps and stickers. All right. These are my scraps. I give the best scraps, okay? They're not just, you know, whatever is hanging around. Good stuff. Okay. Here's a pack of stickers. There's 40 stickers. There's washi stickers and there's clear PVC stickers in here. Um, all kinds of different things. Butterflies, mushrooms. Uh, botanicals, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so this is a general idea. Each scrap pack, of course, is different depending on what I have. Um, here's some kind of shiny uh, tissue paper. It's got like a sheen to it. Um, here are some napkins if you want to try your hand at decoupage. Okay. have some wallpaper, coffee dyed envelopes, coffee dyed paper. Um, a lot of times, or most, no, I always put sewn paper in there because when I do the sewn papers for orders on our Etsy shop, if there's even just the smallest muck up on them, like here, I don't like that. Um, I do another one. I don't, I don't send these out to customers, but I do use them because they are perfectly fine. Um, there's all kinds of, this is a cabbage dyed paper. Um, stenciled papers are stenciled papers that we have in the shop. Sometime I, I pull them up and they decide to stick. So we have that edge, which is actually a really nice edge, but I'm not gonna send it to a customer uh, who's ordering stencil dyed paper, uh, coffee dyed papers. Okay, so there's another one. Um, some coffee dyed glassine bags. Again, if it doesn't come out the way I want it, I don't send it in an order, and it goes in the scrap pile. There's some antique braille, some embossed papers, um, more stencil dyed, coffee dyed, um, some coffee dyed doily that for some reason I didn't think was good enough for an order. I can't see why, but ah. The golden shadow papers. I didn't like this design, so went in the scrap pile. More sewn papers. Sewn papers. Ah, this is a sewing sample paper, and it's got all kinds of bits of sewing on it, which is really cool to use in junk journals. More lace dyed and sewn. Sewn. Coffee dyed. Um, and then this is card some six by six paper. Um, ah, this is Tim Holtz. Nice piece of Tim Holtz. There. Um, some pretty paper scraps. This is all cardstock. Cardstock. Um, it's a pretty paper. I think that's Stamparia. I'm not sure. Um, this is paper studio papers that I have. 
so much of you can't imagine. I'll never be able to use it. Um, coffee dyed rectangle doily. So see, I get nice scraps. So that's the whole kit. Um, I wanted to show you also what it comes in box. Only because I think it's really super convenient. I know you can't see the whole thing in here. Um, it's a large box, 16 by 16 by 2. And the whole idea is that you can put everything back in here. And it's thin enough, you can see, to slide under a bed or put on top of a refrigerator or get it out of your way. Because if you're just starting out, I know you're not going to have a whole huge craft set up. And until you realize whether it's something that you want to get into or not, uh, you need something that's going to save space. So... Everything goes right back in here. Also, I love this because you can put this on any table and you can actually use the inside of the box as a craft mat because investing in a craft mat, <laughs> if you're not sure about what you want to do yet, is a lot of money. Believe me, I know. I know. I've purchased many a craft mat until I found the right one. So, everything goes right back in here and you're good to go. So, now that we've gotten these shameless plugs for my shop out of the way, let me try to give you a little bit of inspiration and show you what I'm working on right now, um, aside from the accordion journal, journal that we're working on together. I have a few other things going. Um, some of you may remember this from the video I did about this chalkboard, about making a chalkboard in your folio or your lap book. Okay, well, I've done a little bit more work on it. Not much, it's been slow going with everything. Um, that I want to show you for over here. Okay, this is gonna go here. Actually, I decided to do it this way, yeah. It'll be covered with this paper. There, these are magnets, rare earth magnets that I've put in here. This will be covered. And then I've made this folio, which I just showed you at the beginning of the video, um, to go here. And there's magnets in here on the back of this, underneath that you can't see. It sticks like that, okay. This is a clear acetate window that I'll be stuffing, of course. Um, you can see our vintage tape everywhere. And then this is tape that I've made myself from book binding tape on the edge here that I stamp up and coffee dyed. Okay, and then I have this piece. These are all made from junk mail envelopes, every single one of them. And I've kept the windows. A lot of people just cover them up. I don't get it. Why use it if you're not gonna leave the window? I mean, I, to me anyways, that's the, that's the thing with the, the junk mail envelopes is that they have windows. That's a CD uh, envelope. And this tape I've made also from book binding tape. And it's stamped and it's got some gold on it. There's another one. Okay, and then these. This is also made from a junk mail envelope that had two windows in it. So I've got pockets there. Another one. That's just the uh, I'll take that out. I don't know what I'm going to do with that in there yet. Okay, here's another one. And then these this is one of those interdepartmental delivery envelopes. Right there. Another junk mail envelope. A pocket in the back. Another junk mail envelope. And then I use this for a pocket here. Another junk mail envelope in our vintage tape. The two inch one. Okay. And then this is a pocket right here, a fabric covered pocket. 
gonna slide in here. Okay, <clears throat> and then we have this section, which will be covered in pockets and all kinds of things. This also, and this, and this, and this. As you can see, I have a lot of work ahead of me. All this that you see here on the edges is gold leaf, the denatured alcohol. Okay, so that's what I've been doing. And then here, on this side, right here, I'm going to put a uh, Chinese thread book, um, a little bit different style than the traditional. Let me show you what I've got so far. Okay, this is definitely a work in progress. Um, let me move this out of the way so I can show you this a little bit. Okay, I've gotten the bottom sections done. I'm doing this out of very thick cardstock. Um, the reason why, usually you would do it with um, origami paper or double-sided paper or something like that. Um, but this I'm doing from thick cardstock, and then I'm going to cover it, um, both sides, with fabric, a very special fabric. I've purchased two antique so silk saris, and these are going to be completely covered by that. As you can see, I only have the bottom sections done. This is the bottom box. I'll just show you what it is opened up. Okay, and then these are the two, I guess you call mid-range or mid-low levels. I'm not gonna open that up right now. And I um, still have to fold the boxes that will sit on here and here. And then on top of that, these are for the boxes that will sit on top of those sections, which will be like this, a little bit different than this. I think I was sizing them then. Something more like this size on top of here. Okay, and they'll all be covered with silk. Let me show you those, those are really beautiful. Base here. So that's gonna be about this big. Then I'm gonna do something else here and here. Oh, and if you guys would like to see a video with the the Chinese thread box, leave a leave something down in the comments below, letting me know you'd want to see that. Here they are. Look at these. Aren't they beautiful? Look at that, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And the feel is just unbelievable. Gorgeous with the gold thread. This one is amazing. Let me see the end of them. The end of the sari is about, I think it's about a yard or a meter or something. Uh, yeah, at the end is always different than the, the rest of the sari. So. Amazing. It's just such a beautiful fabric. So the reason I wanted to do that is um, to do them from card and cover them in fabric is to give them longevity. If you just do it from paper, people opening and closing, opening and closing, it gets worn down, it gets torn. This should last a very long time with the fabric covering, and I'll cover the edges also with fabric. So that's going to go here, and I'm also going to put magnets here and magnets in the in the thread box. So that's what I've been working on. I still have a lot of work to go. All of this, 
and the journal that goes in it. <laughs> so it's been slow going, definitely slow going. So I hope you saw something there that maybe inspires you a little bit. Um, oh, I should probably give a shout out to somebody for this. This uh, actually, I got the idea. It, it, it's not it's not exactly the same. Hers is, is very different and very unique, um, very beautiful. Um, from Shabby, so I got the, the tab binding idea from Shabby Soul. Oh, I can't remember her name. I'll put it down below. She has amazing, amazing videos, tutorials. And uh, what she did, she used a Tim Holtz fabric tape, I believe. And um, I, that's not what I used. Um, I made my own tape from book binding tape. Um, but how you do it and how you set it up, uh, I got from her. And um, so thank you to her. Because that was a really, I was wondering how I was going to bind this to put this in here. Because I wanted something different. And I saw her video, I actually saw her video because, um, oh, how did it happen? She, one of my first videos, or uh, the no, the accordion journal video, I think it was. I think she made a comment on it. And, um... I saw it and I replied to her and then I went over to see what she does and it said, I saw a video, it said accordion journal. I said, oh no, did I copy somebody without copying somebody? And no, her, her accordion, this is what she calls an accordion book or accordion journal. Um, nothing like this, which I call an accordion. Maybe I'm not calling this the right thing. Maybe that's an accordion journal and this is something else. Anyways. Um, that's the only name I have for it, so. <laughs> but yeah, she did a beautiful, beautiful piece. And I believe she uses a lot of Tim Holtz, really beautiful papers and stuff. And, um, oh, it just came out gorgeous. It was really, really nice. So I'm going to put her link down below also, so you can check that out. Um, yeah, and that's it. For this. For now. For now, working slowly but surely on it thing's huge anyways so I thought we could do a bit of something in our accordion journal um, the last thing we did was put this paper pad petticoat paper pad in here and I thought we could put a floating butterfly one of my favorite things to do there's a couple ways you could do this um, I'm gonna do the quick way because I actually like it the way it looks afterwards. So, you have your paper pad, you have your cover. Um, what you're gonna do is find your center, at least this way, and you could put it any way up here. You could put it low, high, middle, whatever. And you're gonna punch a hole in your paper pad cover and don't know if you've seen these before. These are washi stickers. And when you buy a big pack of them, like on Amazon or T Timu or Temu, or whatever that is, um, they always put like a few of each kind. The key is, is to find in the ones that you get, like I have a whole thing right here, one of them, is two perfectly symmetrical same ones. Okay, so you're gonna go through your stickers. You can do, a, uh, it doesn't have to be a butterfly, it can also be a dragonfly or something else. As long as you have two clear stickers that are symmetrical, okay? So let's find our middle. I would need a pencil for that, or a pencil. I'm gonna put my circle a little bit low, I think. So I'm gonna make a, let's get a, a whoop. There we go, centimeters. So 10, so I'm gonna put, if you've been following along, your paper pad should be 10 centimeters wide, which I believe is three, no, that, 
three and three quarters wide. So I'm going to put it here. Mark in the middle. Okay. And then I'm going to cross that just to get a sense of where I want to punch. Okay. Now, if you don't have a punch like this, giant punch um, you can use a cup to trace around you can use something like this to trace around and then what I would do is put something hard like a cutting board or something underneath this and then use a, a pen knife or what do you call it a utility knife um, or scissors or whatever you can find I'm not going to reach there. Okay. And I should put that lower. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and you get a funky circle, too. So, now what we're going to do is you're going to get some fishing line thinnest you can get. Don't use a thick one. It's kind of icky if you use a thick one. I um, don't know if you can see this. You probably can't see it. I'll put a link to this. I got this on Amazon from Mr. Penn. They have a lot of cool things. Um, I'll put the link to it. Now you're going to put this, you can put a bit of double face tape. Now, I recommend using double face tape for this part and another part that I'll show you. Um, instead of glue, just to get it stuck. You don't want to wait for it to dry in. It's moving around and stuff like that. So you're going to burnish your double face tape down. And then get some kind of picky tool. Take your fishing line, put it right there, and you're going to burnish that down, put it right in the middle. Okay, don't know if you can see that. And then you're going to get your glue. I'm going to use Fabrifix. Take your other butterfly and put that right on top. Now, because these stickers are PVC, it's going to take a few minutes for it to dry. Just let it sit. The Fabrifix dries quicker than a water based glue because it's acetone based and well, it's silicone based, but it's diluted with acetone and it evaporates much quicker. Okay, you position it, make sure it's positioned well. If something sticks out or something like that, you can just cover it up with pen later on. Oh, I forgot to say, you can either do this or not. Um, I've fussy cutted these so it doesn't have that edge. Not that it matters, it's just the way I want it to, to look. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. Okay, this should be dry now. So now we're gonna put it on, let me just clip this. And I'm gonna put this on the easy way. That, oh, so cute, I love it. Okay. Normally I would put it on um, before I put this cover on, but I had this as an 
afterthought. So it's not going to be under the paper. We're going to put it under the line, under washi. But washi doesn't stick so well. It's not designed to stick well. It's not supposed to. So we're going to use double face tape and put the washi on top of that. So I'm going to find my middle again. Oop. Make a couple of lines so I know exactly where my middle is. I'm putting down the tape. Oh, that didn't come out. Why? Okay. So I'm going to put this double face tape down. I'm going to smooth one here, which is the exact same size as my washi. Garnish it. I'm going to put a little piece right here. And find my middle again. And I can do it over here. Just make sure this is good. It's my pokey too. Take your backing off. Okay, and I want it. There we go. Press that down. Then we're going to take our washi. Try to get in a position where you can see the double sided tape, like the glare from it. Make sure you don't cut the string when you cut the washi. <laughs> Sounds like something I would do. Okay. An 
ink that up a little bit in the circle. to do this. Just go over that a little bit. Make sure it's stick. Okay. Almost there. I'm going to take this off. Make sure that's stuck in there and then washi just a little bit. <clears throat> and there you have it. You have a floating butterfly on your cover. Let's ink that up a little bit. So that's the quick way to do it. So there it is. There it is. So I hope you found some inspiration in this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let's put this in here. And I hope you like the floating butterfly idea. It can be used many different ways. It can be used on a journal cover. It can use, just be uh, on one of the pa pages in your journal. Um, that's it. So let me know again uh, in the comments below if you would like to see uh, me do the, the uh, Chinese sewing book. Um, and let me know... If, what you think about that red scarlet tape and whether I should put it in the shop or not, because I'm not sure. Okay, bye everybody.